Namaste. I know you can't. Oh, there I am. I swear not. <laughs> Sounds, oh, I did swear actually. That's why I'm coming to the mat again today. Um, I found myself triggered and I was like literally cursing at my kids and they're like, you better not be in a bad mood. I'm like, I am. Actually, I wasn't in a bad mood. I was just agitated and I had to let it all go through me. Like literally all of the different energies of human beings around me had to go through me. I was experiencing these emotions and I know you guys are too. So that's why I want to make this a really lay down uh, hip recovery practice. My hair is a mess, that's how I feel. So to really lay down and just move the body with a strap, bolsters, um, bolsters if you need it, blocks, blankets, like whatever you need. This is what makes me happy. Bring what you need to make you happy. And let's do this 45 minute practice for being completely tired uh, about relationships in the sacrum, not knowing your roots, but wanting to know how to ground. So this is the practice for grounding in your sacrum. So I'd like to begin laying down and chanting the sound of Aum, just even laying down, okay? So <laughs> that's I'm like, I'm ready. Strap blocks put everything at your hips like literally at your hip side and then that way you have easier access to it and then lay down like simply just lay down oh here's to all our triggers and all of our discomforts may we just stop time out and feel the body as you lay down using the blanket underneath your occiput bone stretch out your legs and just move your body the way you feel like you want to lay down and roll around. I've been working with a lot of, um, say, peeps my age, say 50s, and I'm finding they're not keeping their mobility, meaning they're not rooting, they're not strengthening their bodies. Um, they're very, say, Let's say humans are, are starting to get into that space where, you know, they, they're getting a little lazy and that's not a name calling, maybe it is. But we do need to exercise every day. We do need to move our bodies. We do need to get off the couch, off the office chair, you know, away from the computer, away from the TV. And we do need to dig into the gardens. We do need to build our own things. We do need to socialize. We do need to hug each other. <laughs> so this is about hugging yourself so that you can hug others. All right, start to, as I just did, take your right arm underneath the left arm and grab yourself. Stretch your legs up, shake out your legs, bend your knees, be you. And then from here, just bring your feet to the mat. And we're gonna curl ourselves up. Just give ourselves a hug as you flex the neck and then just roll yourself up and squeeze. And then keep that flexion of your neck and bring your knees towards your arms. And then squeeze in for five, close your eyes for four, for three, two, and then slowly release the shoulders and the feet and the arms stretch up and open wide. So this is about personal power, left arm under right arm and about, uh, about <laughs> loving yourself, but it's also lumbar spine work. So first thing, float your feet up and then flex your neck and peel up your head and your shoulder blades and then bring your knees towards your outer arms so your elbows are poking between and just squeeze as tight as you can see if you roll up your thoracic spine more for three for two and then release back down open up your arms shake out your legs yeah so you'll notice some of you may need to work your neck and uh, and that if you follow or not follow but participate with me you'll get hear me say neutral neck it's working your neck so now, heel toe your feet as wide as your yoga mat. Open up your arms like airplane wings and just begin the practice of breathing mindfully. Close your eyes. Inhaling knees to center, exhaling the knees to a side. And I know 
I said we're going to chant the sound of Om, but let's do it while we do this. So in breath, knees to center, exhale, knees to a side, chanting Om. Knees to center, full breath in. When you're ready to Om, let the knees fall out. Om. When you run out of own breath, in breath, knees to center. And you could do this by just chanting it in your head, doing it out loud, full breath, knees center, own to the side. Om. And think of it as you in breath, your knees to center and own to the other side. It's ah, oh, mm. And it's about seven counts per syllable. So it's a really slow drip. And you can start to wave your arms in any other fashion that you want to. And just do that a couple of more times on each side. So yoga for recovery, this is completely hip, sacral, family relationship dynamic stuff. And once you bring your knees back up to center after you've done that a couple of times, take your time doing it, okay? Just take your time. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, when your knees come back to center, keep them there. So letting those catch up to that. And once your knees come to the center, you could draw your knees into your chest, finding your yoga strap, using your feet to find it if you need to. And just placing that strap over your shins for a moment. Rotate your ankles. And then find the center of the strap. Hold the center of the strap with your peace fingers. I'm going to teach you a new way of holding a strap. So you hold the strap, lift it up, and then you make a fist. So remember, when you make a fist, your thumb's on the outside of your fingers. And then you could thread this strap through your index finger and middle finger. So you're learning how to just thread it through while you keep a fist. So find the center, create a loop with your yoga strap, and then wrap it around the balls of the left foot. Spread your toes, extend your right leg straight down, make your arms nice and straight, meaning snug as a bug, shoulder blades down your spine. See how nice and long my arms are, and they're contracting back down into my shoulders. So I see a lot of this. I see a lot of people with their head tilted back and their arms way up here. That's not what we want. So if that's too much for your right leg to be straight, bend it. Let's come back to the left shoulder, neck, and left leg. So what you're doing is you're lengthening the back of the neck so the occiput bone stays down, smoothing out your neck, neutral. Then drawing your shoulders down, your spine, broadening in the collarbone, and then pulling the strap taut, resisting it against the balls of your foot. And look how much better my form is. So form is everything. I'm going to bend my knee and bring my foot a little bit more over my pelvis so that I can truly feel the connection more in my lower part of my sacrum. So your sacrum looks like this, like a disc, or I don't know how to explain, irregular shape. I always think of it as like a spade or a cobra head. Anyways, you want to root down not only the top part, but also the bottom part. And it's tricky. Like, you really have to choose to find it. So I like to find the bottom ridge and then knit the belly button in and then really imprint. It's a lot of work. Trust me. And then once you find that, this might be enough for you. For some of you, you want to put a little bit more, maybe not use the strap, and your leg might come over your head and shoulders down, but you could still maintain head, shoulders down. You do you. Three more breaths, wherever you are. You can even bend your knee, hold your foot, and do it without a strap if you don't feel comfortable with the strap. Two more breaths. Long breaths. Here's the tricky part. Now, you're going to take your left hand, excuse me, your right hand to hold both ends of the strap or bent knee, no strap, the outside of your foot. Got it? Okay, left arm goes down and then you begin to cross the leg over. 
So that leg is above your hip and you'll feel your bum. I don't care if I'm tying myself up in this strap. So every athlete, every human being, it's like tartar buildup on your teeth. Everybody feels this. You could be the most athletic, most Madonna, goddess, whatever. <laughs> you still get sore butt because it has to do with how you clench when you deal with negative and or any energies up in your head. They're first a thought, then they translate physically. Yeah, thoughts or emotions physically. Feel it. So I, I like to call us the tight asses when we come to um, argumentative thoughts and disagreeing with somebody in a relationship. So in your twist, breathe. And remember, you have zero control over anyone else in life. Zero. If you want to play the victim party, you make me feel this way. You make me feel... Go ahead. You're still going to have a real sore ass. And if you want to play codependent, oh, I'm sorry. Did I hurt your feelings? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I hurt you? Are you upset with me? Then go ahead and you'll still have a sore ass. So choose to start to really navigate yourself and say, you know what? I'm cool. I'm cool. I can truly say no thank you and I can truly start honoring my own emotions. So start to bend and extend this leg, like literally. Good, now bend that knee and take the outer edge of that left foot up against your right thigh, float your right foot up. And I do this in every in-studio class, pretty much every Wednesday. And then start to rock and roll in your sacrum. You know where that is, remember it's that irregular bone right there. Spreading your toes and flexing your feet and just feeling your hips. Lots of stuff goes on when we are psychologically, you know, just really uh, swimming through all of our own emotional paradigms that are needing to be composted. And it's, you know, you got to focus on you. When you're ready, thread your left arm between the thighs and then interlace your fingers at the shin or the knee crease. You decide. And breathe your breath. I got to get up and get myself my water. I forgot to bring it to the mat. So as you rock and roll in your hips, you'll feel them like woo wee. And learning to get up off the mat as agile as I did that. Mm, there's an episode for that. Oh my God, it's a smoothie. So it's all hot. Uh, you know when it gets all gum. So rock and rolling as I do my best to get something out of here. Mm. It's called a mustache now. I got myself a beet mustache. So, <laughs> uh, okay. Once you're there, oh, doesn't that feel amazing? Release your right foot onto the mat. That's probably all up my nose now. And then draw the left heel close, to, or right heel, sorry, right heel close to your bum. Start to windshield wipe back and forth on your hips. And then let the left foot land all the way on the right side and keep that shape but now let's lift the right thigh up. oh my goodness you'll feel your left hip then from there plug the left shoulder down take your right hand i know it's a lot of cueing press it inside your left knee and feel that like check in with it root both feet firmly down so you got to activate your feet four points of the left foot outer edge of the right foot Move your head and jaw around. See, I'm, I'm always a person, not always a person, <laughs> a person who loves uh, cueing. So you could compost half the stuff I say, but yet it's really important to get your shape optimal because if you choose not to, you could injure yourself. So really paying attention to the fullness of the breath in and out. If there's 911 pain, You've gone too far and you can use this um, bolster for this one. You could place your shin, foot and thigh and that gives you some more room. Okay. So really paying attention. You're pressing nicely your left knee away and you're opening up through the right arm and move your jaw around, move your head around. Close your eyes and go into your mind's eyes. You know, you could continue to chant OM every exhalation. Go to your mind's eye and the invitation is to see yourself letting go of some of the rigidity that you may hold in your righteousness, in your contest, in your 
you know, jealousy of your difference of opinion. And start to just really discern and realize that, you know, what really matters is that you have relationships and that you're not making them wrong to, for you to be right. Nor do you want to make them feel like they need to play victim or be codependent. We all play these paradigm games. So start letting that go with just realizing, just be real. And then when you're ready to windshield wipe those legs up, bring them up and shake out your legs and go, oh yeah. So this is a psychological first before it becomes physical. Everything begins in a thought. Hug both knees to your chest, open up your knees nice and wide, even take your arms between your thighs, flex your feet. See if you can grab the outer edges of your feet, if not grab the inner edges of your knees. Oh my gosh. And then start to just wield around, when I mean by wield, like a, 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 um, a, with a sword, wielding a sword. So moving your knees, bending and extending through the, you know, that inner knee, thigh, flesh, hip area. And you'll feel those magnets, longus, brevis, panactus. Those are big muscles. Well, they're little muscles, but they keep your legs from doing the splits. <laughs> so you'll feel this, trust me. They're working hard to contract and bring your knees together. And then exhale. And let's release the left foot to the mat. Hallelujah. And then taking your yoga strap, middle finger, peace fingers, peace baby, over the balls of the foot, straightening your left, or excuse me, your right leg up over the hip, left leg goes on to the back, oh my goodness, and just feel, feel it. Oh, I keep on going to my mind's eye because closing my eyes is really essential right now to feel inside my body what I'm feeling. I'm so tempted to look outside my window because it's a windy day and my prayer flags are so pretty and the trees are budding, so squirrel. So extending that right leg, feeling it, moving it around. You do you, some of you may, might wanna lose the strap and just go, wow, that one's, my shoulders are riding up so it's not working for me. My hamstrings are so tight on that leg, so I'm gonna use the strap on this one. Breathe your breath, meaning fullness of your breath. Yeah. And then let's take the left hand to hold both ends of the strap and start to cross that leg over. Now, if you're using a strap, make sure you keep your left arm straight. And when you cross the hip over, that means the boot, booty will come up off the floor. Make sure your heel doesn't go below your hip. Keep it above your hip. So even if you have to use the strap and bend your knee. Some of you may want to lose the strap and hold the outer edge of your right foot. Oh. My right hip, left side brain, creativity. I have been feeling a lack of just passionate creativity. I feel like I've just been in my, you know, Capricorn energy of like getting things done, my Virgo getting things done. All my earth signs just seem to be working hard. I'm very earthy. So having fun, you know, have a fire, have a dance, have a sing song, sing along, play some games, party, sex. That's what we all need. We need to feel good. Rock and roll. I did. I said the word S-E-X. <laughs> And then on your next in and out breath, oh my goodness, bring that leg up to center, bend the left knee, externally rotate that right knee, oh, plant the right ankle onto your left knee and then hover the left foot up off the floor and just move around. Massage your face if you want to, open up your arms, close your eyes, feel what you're feeling. You know, I was really yelling at my kids, but I was so happy I received three gifts in the mail today, had a great tutor teach my daughter, and I did a great massage treatment for a wonderful human being, and I'm so grateful, but yet, I don't know why, I just got lost it with my kids, maybe because we're hanging out too much. See, this is all relationship stuff, you know what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> thread your right arm between your thighs, interlace your fingers at the knee shin or the knee crease. Oh, and I forgot to say, 
Some of you really don't feel comfortable in this one, so you could use your yoga strap as well. So see how I placed it over my left shin? Then I thread my right arm through and my left, so I use my peace fingers and pull the strap. And then it accommodates for those that have a little bit less flexion and more booby and belly. I just like saying booby and belly. So you're hugging yourself in as much as you are able to feel it in your right hip. Close your eyes and what stiffness, what, what do you need for your creativity? So if it's your right hip, it's expressing your creativity. And, you know, it's getting outside of the box. It's a sensuality because it's tapping into root chakra and sex. <laughs> Have you had any lately? And passion, right? Just being creative, getting excited, you know? Like literally, you know, new projects, painting, singing, dancing, reading a new passionate book. That can get your wheels turning. So you're in-breath and out-breathing while you're feeling and wheeling this shape. Oh, and then releasing your right foot, excuse me, left foot onto the mat as close to your bum bum as possible and windshield wiping. Oh my goodness. I've been feeling, um, I got into gardens, but I haven't finished this painting that I started. And I don't know why I'm having issues with finishing this painting. It is a self-portrait. That could be the reason why. <laughs> Anyways. So keep on windshield wiping until the, oh my goodness, the right foot lands on the left. Got it? And then pick up your left thigh shin. This side is really tight. Keep your right shoulder down. If your right shoulder's coming up, then maybe take that bolster and look at how I slide it underneath the outer edge of my left foot and the fullness of my right foot. So I get into a shape where it's supportive. Keeping your right shoulder open. This time, let's reach the arms up overhead if your arms don't mind flexion. And I wish I had a sticky mat underneath this bolster because it's now sliding. So I'm going to opt out for something different, like move over on my yoga mat. That'll be better. There. Now it won't slide. So sometimes you have to really move around in all your shapes. So. To be honest with you, I always said that uh, before Yoga Source, yoga was meant to be a one-on-one -on -one practice, so you could get a yoga mat six feet, feet by six feet, and then you could splay it out, and then yoga studios became like it, and now they made them this small. But technically, you could use a yoga mat six feet by six feet, and then Duka makes it. So once you find yourself in this position, press your right knee away with kindness, I was rolling up my yoga mat just or my yoga strap because I was avoiding this part. Breathe into the fullness of your right hip. Feel what you're feeling. Feel what you're feeling. If I'm too talkative today, that's because I am truly doing this as a practice to like having a tea party with your friends. You could be talking back at to me and talking about your kids, your husband. I just feel like venting today. And what a great way to vent is being to be in these shapes and let things out, like let it out. Un, you know, clench your biting surfaces of your teeth. Some of you might be grinding, wiggle your toes around. You can massage any other body parts that you want while you're in this position. And then when you're ready, open up your arms nice and bright. And I'm just going to undo the right leg and reshape and reset my bum and my knees. Oh, gosh, yeah. And then from there, open up your knees up in towards your armpits again and another happy baby. And you could explore your happy baby by moving around from heel to pubis and the other leg out. And your dance becomes your dance. I always like just taking my knees and opening them. <laughs> no pun intended and no stuff, no smart ass stuff over there. And then slowly bring your legs together and then bend your knees into your chest. Hug your knees into your chest. Mm -hmm. Venting is important. This is where we are tight ass. You get into tight, you hold it. You know, difference of opinion is huge right now. 
If it's in your practice to grab the outer edges of your feet, go for it. If it's creating a pain because you're sickling in your ankle, that means the right ankle and the underneath, that's the right knee, then here's another option to take the strap around the balls of the under leg, which is the right leg, holding it with the left hand. And you could still manage to draw the feet to the outer edges of the wall. Got it? So this is a really challenging one, or you could just hold your knees and draw them in towards your chest because both gluteal pieces, the piriformis, um, IT band, uh, you know, the fascia latte, I call them. Always reminds me of Starbucks, not to plug them, hamstrings. These big babies get clenched when we're not creatively expressing and having a nice fluid, say, existence of passion and creation in our lives. So they get really stiff. I know I massage a lot of butts and I could, I could tell who's a tight ass. <laughs> I know who you are. <laughs> I'm one too. Yeah, I could feel that truly. And when you're ready to unwind, undo those legs, shake them out. We could spend a lot of time doing that one. Let's switch it. So now the right thigh over the left thigh. Okay? Or opposite. Hug your knees into your chest. Breathe your breath. Rock and roll. Are you starting to feel better? I know I am. And then for some of you, again, you can slide your hands down the shins, outer edge, peroneals to the outer ankles and grab the dorsiflexed outer ankle, uh, foot, edge, <laughs> pinky side of the foot. And then lift the feet up towards the ceiling, bending your knees and then drawing them back down towards the floor and the outer walls. So you want to keep your, your ankles from sickling. I just noticed I was really sickling my uh, right knee foot. So you're going to draw the pinky toes towards the outer knees and press your tailbone down, shrug the shoulders down and away from your ears and make it a more hug, like hug from the peripheral into the midline. You can rock back and forth. See if you can get that sacrum down and breathe in and out. So there's a lot of directions in this. In other words, do what feels good. Maybe just hold your knees for three more breaths. Sometimes when I work my hips, I just want to cry. Undo your legs. I think I'm about to cry. Oh, such hard times and yet beautiful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for my kids. Lift your bum and slide your bolster horizontally underneath them, underneath it. <laughs> and then extend your legs out fully. And then reach your arms overhead so we fully extend the hip flexors on the front of the pelvis. And this is where it gets really juicy because you start opening up the front of your body and a lot of people are stuck in flexion. So this can really trigger and make some tears rock and roll. And yes, guys cry too. From there, let's reach, uh, interlace your fingers over your chest and, and um, cause I have, how do you pronounce this, visposana? So your index fingers and your thumbs cross like you're doing a Charlie's Angels. And then reach those arms up and over the crown of the head. If that's too much for you, open up your arms into cactus, regardless of where you're at. And then take your right leg and cross it all the way over to the left side of your mat on top of the left ankle. Yeah, and just be there and let the heaviness of your hips sink into the mat. If your arms don't like this shape, do whatever shape. But I'd love to offer that we lift the head and shoulders and bring them and wiggle them like an inchworm over towards the left edge of the mat. Make sure there's nothing in your road. And breathe. Some of you may want to just grab a hold of your right wrist with your left hand and make it a little bit more relaxing. Oh, the fingers that is, and soften into the side bend and guarantee it will trigger some of you. It'll trigger you so big that you need to listen and change the shape to where you can breathe fully in it. And you know what I'm talking about. Some of you are getting agitated right now. Mm. So if you need to change the shape, change the shape. 
Lengthen the tailbone, tone the belly button in, wiggle your butt flush around. Feeling what you're feeling. Hi, Tyson, come say hi. Tyson just walked in. Come say hi. Do you feel better? He had poo poo bum. In breath, when you're ready, come to center. You guys know what it's like when your butt isn't really happy. Poo poo bum, acid bum, sorry, TMI. Bend your knees and rock and roll. That's from not being able to ingest and digest. And some of you are going to say, oh, it's what I ate. No, what you ate unconsciously, right? Unconscious to begin with. Bend your knees towards your chest. Rock from hip to hip on the bolster. Because we're going to do that again on the other side. Land your feet. Oh, yeah. Stretch your legs as wide as your yoga mat. Reach your arms overhead. Reach, reach, reach. Feel it. Now dig your heels into the mat. Flex your feet towards your kneecaps. Yeah, your digestive system really is loving you right now because if you're cranky and you're constipated or you're having diarrhea, those are two signs of emotional, internal feelings. Either you can't grasp something, so you have diarrhea, or you're holding on to something so tightly you're constipated. That's just how it goes. Okay, Vispasana or Kispasana. So do it the non-habitual way with your index fingers and thumbs overhead. Reach, reach, reach. Then your left leg crosses to your right ankle. So your left ankle to right ankle all the way to the left, right side of your mat. Feel the stretch first opening up in that left hip. Oh my goodness, can you soften your hips into the mat? Let them sink with the breath. And then slowly take yourself all the way over towards V. Uh oh, yeah, the right side of the mat. I can really feel this. My bum start to slide up or too far down off the bolster, so I'm reshaping myself. Again, do what you need to do to make sure everything feels like awesome in its discomfort. <laughs> Breathe your breaths. Some of you may just hold the left wrist with your right hand and take everything over towards the right corner. So we look like a half moon. You can see it in the bird's eye view. Hi, bird's eye view. Whoo, breathing, release your butt cheeks. Everybody let go of your glutes. Let go of clenching. Let go of being righteous, being right. Get rid of contest. It's not a contest who's right and who's wrong. Let go of the judgments and then party in your own vessel and say, thank you for being me. I'm just going to start really loving me. More Epsom salt baths, more hot tub, more fun, more passion, more sex. <laughs> Inhale, come back to center. I don't know why that just keeps on popping up. And then bend your knees into it. I know. <laughs> and bend your, I know what you're saying. Bend your knees to your chest and rock and roll. So I am going to keep this to a 45 minute practice, even though I could do this forever, but we're going to turn it. So I'm going to offer that you turn to a hip, doesn't matter which one, and then just pick yourself up enough that you can come onto your tummy. Oh yeah. You're going to place your pubis on the bolster, slide your hands up ahead. You can use your blanket. I hope you had a blanket for your occipital. Please get one if you don't, and then walk around with through your toes to, until your pubis is on the mat and then open up your knees as wide as your yoga mat or as much as you can and bring the inner edges of your feet to touch yeah then you're going to stack your hands and lower your forehead to the blanket stacked hands so you can breathe and we're just going to hang out here for a bit you can windshield wipe your shins back and forth that may mean bringing your knees closer together but windshield wiping actually it feels good to have them wide apart so it limits your windshield wipe or you could just let your feet be static and then you can also let them land on the floor so you do you what feels good mm -hmm. just a couple more breaths good And then on your next breath, just lift your face up, bring your forearms into what we call a sphinx position, roll your shoulders back, and I'm immediately toning the belly button. I'm pressing my knees into the floor, and my elbows are slightly ahead of my shoulders, and I'm grabbing the floor, and I'm literally feeling a back bend by pressing my pubis into the bolster. 
Some of you may be able to pick up your elbows by hugging them into the midline, like how I accent, accentuate my words, hugging. And then maybe lifting the knees up while you lift your heart up. So you're really toning the back body and extending and lengthening the front body. If you prefer to keep your knees down and your elbows down, please do. Keep your neck neutral by tucking the chin in more so that your neck is in inflection and is not in extension. It's in a neutral position. You'll feel the difference when you go through those two. I'm going to draw my knees back up for myself and keep my elbows down this time because that's really feeling good on my back. You do you. You maybe lift your elbows and your knees or just keep everything down or even just lift your elbows or just lift your knees. Find out where you feel like a G-spot for five. Feel the fullness of your breath. You're contracting your back muscles for four. Your neck is neutral for three. You're breathing that breath in with ease for two. Hi, yeah. Big smile on your face. And then releasing your thighs, your knees. And then extending your legs straight out. Oh, yeah. And then wiggle around on your pubis and then land your forearms. Splay your hands or splay your elbows and stack your hands, forehead to the mat. And a little windshield wipe if you feel good. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And then on your next breath, release your feet back down, come back up onto your forearms. And this is how we're going to work that lower back, strengthening it. So we've got our flexion going on with the bolster, but squeeze your legs as tightly as you can together. Really grab the mat with your forearms and isometrically drag those elbows towards your hips and extend through the neck. So you're looking towards your thumbs and then really plug into the tops of your feet so your knees lift and your legs get really contracted. Then lift your legs up simultaneously. Spread your toes, press through the balls of your feet and reach through those legs, but contract them so tightly through the inner thighs that you can feel all that work in your lower back. Good, and only lift up as much as you can maintain the tone of the belly and without falling forward. Got it? And then some of you may lift your elbows and drag your hands isometrically towards your hips so that you get even a fuller back bend, but keep the squeeze of your inner knees and inner thighs. Don't lose that. Maybe your knees are down and your elbows are down. Two more breaths, wherever you may be. You've got this. Uh-huh. And then exhale, release the knees, splay your elbows out, stack your hands, bend your knees and windshield wipe. So strengthening, so as much as we twist and turn, we've got to strengthen our lumbar spine, our personal power, our ability to shazam. Hard part now, knees to the mat, toes curled under, slide your hands towards your lower hip, your hips, and then a mindful knee, toe, neutral neck, okay? Look at the mat, press up into your knees and toes. Plant or flex your feet and then rise up. Mm -hmm. Come up onto your shins. Take really kind, sweet breaths in and out. I love my yoga studio space, squirrel. <laughs> rise up onto your shins, lengthen your tailbone down. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Reach through the crown of the head, pressing into your shins and lean back and feel your quads, your front legs. So what you're doing is you're leaning into your shins, literally, and you're bending at the knees only, and you're pressing up from your shins. So it's like you're a piece of flexible metal, like a, a, those old fashioned flamingo chairs. Your neck stays neutral and your lower back and abdominals are connected. Okay, so you glue them together and you're leaning back with an in-breath and exhaling up or vice versa. Okay, so connection. You could do this several times, as many times, as limited times. It strengthens your core root chakra. It grounds you in your passion. It's like using a little muscle, or a lot of muscle, a lot of, no, I'm not going there. Sorry, everybody. I'm a little off today, aren't I? And then exhale, lower your bum to the mat. Oh, there you go. Swirl around. Okay, take it back onto your backside as you wish, however that may look. Damn it, oh, my video's stuck. Oh, people, that's okay. All right. 
Till next time, I guess. <laughs> oh, that sucks, Lorama, doesn't it? All right, that didn't work, stop. <laughs>